This is Don DiDiVinci reporting from the meth lab. Recently, the county of Lake, hiding behind the skirts of the planning department, opened a new chapter in its relentless class war on our residents. The victims of this latest craven attack include many truly desperate and damaged people. This latest tedious sequel to Reefer Madness is misrepresented as the Grow Ordinance. Misrepresented because there are no provisions to ensure the intent of Proposition 215 is not negated by this stealth law. Other casualties include truth, common sense, logic, civil liberties, and the neglect of real problems. Ho-hum. Since our local gubertocracy does not have the authority to overturn a state proposition, they put all their pea brains together to come up with a pot growing regulation that is so restrictive that it would accomplish pretty much the same thing as a ban. Is that an unattended consequence? No. Then why did they shut out all input from those most affected by the ordinance. Even though this edict was written as a planning ordinance, it is enforced as a criminal misdemeanor. Another throwback to an earlier era of foaming at the mouth prohibition. We don't do that moving forward thing in Lake County. I know some people may think this judgment is too harsh, so let me back it up with a few points for those who haven't entirely given up on the disparaged practice of thinking. First, there is the economies of the issue. The high price of pot allows third-party growers to assume costs that they would not absorb if the price were much less. The idea is to make a profit. These costs are opportunity costs. This means growers have to give up doing other things with their time and money to grow pot for people too impaired to grow their own. If those other jobs or businesses paid better than growing pot, most people would be doing those other things. It's one of those free market supply and demand things uh, conservatives are always talking about. This means we can get to a state of equilibrium with few externalities by either increasing supply by using modern farming methods to produce bud by the bale or reduce demand by implementing universal health care and enforcing legitimate impairment issues, i.e., do you want to keep driving? Then there is the cost of violence associated with POTS' huge artificial price and the small scale of farming making security 
a hit and miss proposition. Because the market price is artificially high, thieves will spend more time planning a robbery and take greater physical risks than they would to steal your TV. If pot were as cheap as hemp in 1900, there would be no preference to steal it from people. The non-prohibition market price would net uh, most violent criminals less than taking a low-paying job. Violence was never associated with pot before it became illegal. Violence is the price society pays due to an artificially high price. Even the quasi-legal status means police are less likely to be called. Reducing the cost to criminals of committing violent acts still further. Recently, environmental damage has come into fashion as the justification for draconian grow ordinances. And why is this damage greater than for other agricultural crops? Growing pot is not inherently more destructive to the environment than, say, grapes. Unlike other crops, there is no allowable legal limit as to the amount or type of damage a pot farmer can cause. So the sky is the limit for as long as the operation exists. This inability to farm a crop in a legally regulated structure creates an incentive to make only short-term and portable farming investments, resulting in more damage than if a farmer had a longer term investment to get a return from. Because these short term investments tend to be disposable or portable, neighbors have more environmental costs extended to them since somebody with more permanent investments has to worry about legal retaliation at some point. Fly-by-night farmers of an illegal crop can simply walk away when the heat is on and still make a profit. The current GROW ordinance is more prohibitory than regulatory, with few legal options, it forces non-compliance. It offers no regulatory remedy for neighbors to this problem. It is drug war light. Related to measurable environmental damage are the vaguely defined catch-all nuisance costs. On a first pass, a nuisance is anything that affects someone's enjoyment of their life or property. Since this definition is so subjective, it can mean anything. The color of your neighbor's skin to Crying babies. Nuisances are functionally defined by what they are not. If a court or regulatory agency has said something is not a nuisance, legally speaking, then it is not. Everything else could be. Many people don't like the smell of pot, 
so it could be a nuisance unless a government authority says it is not. Other people have an allergy to sulfur. When it is thick in the air, it can cause them physical pain. Sulfur is commonly put on grapes. But the grape growers got the government to say sulfur is not a nuisance under the freedom to farm concept. So people who are affected cannot get legal redress. There is no reason other than class privilege why the smell of pot should not be treated legally the same as the stench of sulfur. Unless you've been living in a cave, you know that this country is facing skyrocketing medical costs. These costs are not caused by pot. These mounting costs are mostly caused by perfectly legal substances and legal lifestyle choices. In spite of non-medical opinions advanced by politicians and pushers of alcohol and cigarettes, there are no medical costs from pot smoking that amount to more than a tiny fraction of those caused by the all-American lifestyle. Continuing to pursue the war on pot over eight decades with the weapons of ignorance, lies, and class hatred have racked up staggering costs. Denying people time-honored folk remedies when modern medicine has turned them away for economic reasons displays monumental cruelty. Local government should be addressing the real causes of problems instead of rounding up the usual scapegoats. Real leaders should focus on those causes, not on cheap publicity from beating the drum of urban legends. Under no circumstances should holders of power be inflicting pain on our struggling residents. But, but, I was just following national orders. Doesn't cut it anymore. Now that our planning professionals have discredited their profession in the service of bogus reasoning, all we are left with is DEA head and slingers ominous warning before Congress that marijuana made white women want to have sex with musicians and Negroes. Maybe it's true. It hasn't been disproven. Is that your reason for supporting a reaper madness grow ordinance? Mr. Lake County candidate for supervisor? <laughs>